name of the plane, Butch. Is Butch. Which comes from? That's my dad's nickname. It's your dad's nickname? Yep. What was his actual name? Francis. Francis Your Butch father's Jr. name is Francis? Yes. <laughs> you didn't, didn't know that? I didn't know that. That's, I only know it was Butch. Well, that's Calvin's middle name, too, after my dad. You know? So how does Butch come about, now that you give me a story of this? You know, I don't even know. I think when he was in the military, just short haircut just when stuck. he came home and his buds called him Butch. Butch. And I think and that's like just quick stuck. for another. Butch is the name of the plane. 6-2 right? Tango, which is the call sign. 6-2 Tango, yep. That's the call sign. Yep. As I see. Like so Niner, Niner, 6 two Tango. Niner, Niner, 6 yep. Tango. The show, the whatever it is, is Old Green Plane. Right. And that came up. That's that's because this is obviously incredibly important to you. And yeah. even how you came about reconnecting with your father's plane, Butch, that's a that's a story. Growing up, you know, all I'd ever heard about was 62 Tango, 62 Tango, and one of these days we're going to find the plane and buy it back. And he, you know, he was always going to teach me how to fly in this airplane. But we could never find it. And you know, that was before the internet. Now you can type up a yeah. tail number and find out exactly where it's at. Yeah. So you know, he always just kept an eye out for it and, and, and throughout the, the remainder of his life and, and, and even when he got dementia and started losing his mind, he would remember me as the son that loved aviation and tasked me with finding his plane. And he would ask me, hey, you know, if you, did you find that plane yet? If you find 6-2 find Tango, I'll teach you how to fly in it. And here's a guy that, you know, with that disease, he couldn't remember if he had just eaten or not, but yeah. he could remember, you know, talk about a thrill. Yeah. Uh, he could remember about every detail of this plane. You know, it's weird because y how you remember certain things when you're real little. Yeah. I remember being, uh, must have been three years old, and for some reason I just remember, and I don't know, it, it had to have been this plane, right? Because yeah. it was his airplane. Yeah. But I remember was getting it green? in. <laughs> no, original colors were white, blue, and yellow. Really? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. I like old green plane, though. So he ordered this brand new in 1960. 1960. 1960. He took delivery in 1961. Wow. And it's cool because I, I still have the original paperwork from when he took delivery of it. And he took delivery. And where, where was your dad living then? Where did that? So we lived in uh, Jol uh, Lockport, Illinois, right by Joliet. Yeah, near Chicago. And, yep, yep. Yeah, so yeah. he kept it at, w which was then Lewis College. Now it's Lewis University. Okay. That was the airport he flew out of. Yeah, and, and we uh, went through Joliet before, so I remember you kind of right. telling me some of the story too. I remember being in there when I was just a little crapper and looking around at how spacious it was yeah, right and now right. you know from getting in and now how small, small it is and tight right? it's not, but not so anyway he sold it in in 76 to a family and it went to indiana uh -huh. and they they purposed this plane changed out that door and used it to haul skydivers a couple years after he passed my brother who works for the faa called me he said man you're not gonna believe this but i found dad's plane and it's for sale what yeah so i call this couple and the gentleman had just lost his medical uh, he, so he, he couldn't fly. He anymore. couldn't fly anymore. Yeah, okay. Uh, it was at their hangar at home. They lived on a they lived on a uh, little airport uh -huh. with a hangar, and you know they were asking a, a, a price for it that I, you know, couldn't afford at the time. But um, after talking to the lady, she worked with me because she knew the story. Yeah. So they bought it in '76, uh, and then we found it in uh, geez Louise. It must have been 2014, and and I bought it three years to the day of my dad passing away was the day we closed. Uh, but so you get it back to Lincoln and the first time you get it in, which this is blows my mind every time I hear you tell the story or get to tell it myself, really the first time you get in it, you, what do you find? <clears throat> well, first off I get in it and I was just awestruck. I mean, I had a moment where I couldn't believe I was hanging on to the same yokes that my dad hung yeah. on to, you know, yeah. touching the same knobs. Just, it felt like he was there, like yeah. celebrating with me. But then, you know, I was I was checking around and it opened that cargo bay and there was a little box of stuff back there. Just, you know, yeah. not that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and it was some old log books and some, some other stuff. Well, I didn't dig through it, I called the people. Yeah. And they said, well, that was in there when we bought the plane, it's been in our hangar. We just stuck it back in there. Uh, it turns out it was my dad's stuff. So not only did I get to see the paperwork, his logs, but these sunglasses were in there and these are his original uh, Ray-Ban Wayfarers, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> those, and those are like perfect condition. Perfect Heavy, condition. Beautiful, yeah, and they always stay in the plane, right? Isn't that your Always kind of your stay rule? in the plane and then I wear them when I fly. I was there that day that you found those, uh -huh. and I remember you taking a moment once you took hold of them, and I didn't have a pair of Wayfarers at the time, so I was like, those are really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what, can I wear them every once in a while? Right. Uh, but, when we got into the plane and you're like, all right, you know, you always call, like, uh, your thing is calling people, Jack, hey, Jack. Uh, so you're like, all right, Jack, we're gonna get up in this thing. And immediately I'm like, oh, we're gonna fly up in the air. Because <laughs> like, I don't, I myself am not 
a big fan of aeronautics, mm -hmm. as you are well aware of. Right. My history of flying <clears throat> has been like I flew at 17 to go down to see a buddy in San Antonio, first time ever. That was mm -hmm. the first time I ever got in a plane. But I lied to friends. Be like, right. no, I've flown a million times. <laughs> <laughs> kid from Beatrice, Nebraska, you know, like wanted to see bigger <clears throat> than the life he had there, made up a story. My point is that we had this idea. Mm -hmm. Because what I experienced through that was getting up in the air felt like I had a different perspective on life and that opened something to me that went, okay, don't be so scared. Right. Chill out a little bit, relax and just take it in for a little bit. Right. For you, I've always heard you, you're an includer. That's one of your top five gallant strengths. Yeah. You love to bring people in. So it's like, why don't we mix this? Because I love picking people's brains and being curious and getting crazy, you know, and you love to bring people along the ride and, and have, create a story. So why not? Once yeah. people get inter or introduced to it, yeah. just like anything else, if you're not introduced to hunting, you're probably not going to be a hunter. Right, right. But well, and it takes someone to be inclusive, to bring them along and push them out of their comfort zone. Right. To then actually see how they'll react in it. And that's, that's you in a nutshell. I'd love to give people that moment, because that moment when people get it and it's like, wow, yeah. that's cool stuff. Well, you know what that moment is, really? It's the moment you had when you climbed into the plane as a kid. And then when you got older and realized, wait, this thing, it's that same being amazed at the, the largeness of it all. Right. The perspective you have as a child is everything's so big. You don't get that again as an adult until you change your perspective. Right. It's like it's only when you go up that we get that anymore. I mean, and I think for me, when I got up there the first time with you, uh, I felt that immediately. Mm -hmm. that, that, that what you're seeing is, well, it makes you take appreciation for it, you know? Like my grandpa was a big fan of Apollo moon mission and it's the 50 year anniversary of that this year. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of been special for me to connect with my past a little bit too. And so I've been reading more and one of the things that I find come up again and again, and my grandpa said this too, was that when the astronauts left and they finally separated from Earth, they could kind of see it in the rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same you know, experience you have when you're 3,000 foot above. You, you have a great appreciation for it or a greater right. appreciation for it because you now see all the things and the stuff and it's just, you don't, there's no specific name. You don't know that person right there. Mm -hmm. It's all at a distance and it makes you realize like, I, I'm, I'm not a big, this is, we're all nothing. We, right. You know what I mean? And that's partially what we want to bring people along this ride with us, right? Right. Bring people in who we love, who are fascinating and get them in that position to see the world from the Well, and tell their story and, and, see, and, story. and, and see, yeah. Because you know, most people have flown commercially. Yeah. When you fly commercially, that's just like, oh, hum, 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 oh crap, the line is long. You get in, you get up 35,000 feet, and you're buzzing across yeah. the country. Yeah. This is a different animal. I mean, we're, we're 25 to 3,500, 1,500 feet off the ground. Yeah. You're seeing, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's intimate flying, man. That's what I love about it. You and, and sharing that with people is my passion. And it takes them to a different place. Right. Uh, and so we want to bring people on that are unique and interesting and to us, mm -hmm. that have a story to tell or just have a unique thing they want to talk about or just see them get in here and watch right. that experience actually happen in real time. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. There's something about feeling uh, basically a half inch of tin or aluminum <laughs> between you it's, it's and nothing. It's more like a sixteenth of an okay, inch thick. I'm going to go back to half inch. I know, I've been leaning on it, and every once in a while I can feel it push. I'm like, okay, all right, is that my fault? I'll stand your ground, <laughs> man. Stand your ground. I don't know if we've signed any sort of release papers, but I hope that means I'm okay. Uh, the other thing, the last part about this is too, which is our favorite, is eating. Oh my goodness. And the day you showed me that there are actually, and I've told this to so many people now, and every time they're like, what? There's in certain small FBOs, which are small airports at yep. typically smaller towns, which, what's the name of FBO? Fixed base operation. There but are- typically small towns, airports, like <clears throat> Pawnee City, Nebraska. Doesn't have a restaurant, but but they- They, it, they have restaurants at yeah, these places. It's nuts. It's nuts, and where does that come about? Because there's more people flying in- the Well, because if you think about like, you know, cities like Norfolk, Nebraska, yeah. I'm just gonna pick on that for a second. That used to be kind of an airline hub for Nebraska, so people would go to Norfolk and fly to Omaha or fly to Minneapolis, and so they'd have these little airports yeah. in there, or these little restaurants in the terminals. And the cool thing is, is a lot of these, they're like time capsules. You go back and not much changed. Yeah. You know, these yeah. people, fit. and so, 
you know, you fly into these little town restaurants, these little town airports, and you go into the restaurant, and there's all this nostalgia around you. Yeah. And you look outside, and you wouldn't think anybody's in there, but you know, they, they always have a, a little crowd, and some of yeah. them fly in. Like we were at one, remember? And all those <laughs> yeah. airplanes are coming around. Yeah, right? it blew me away. It's just a cool culture. Eclectic mix of people too, because even though you're in Norfolk, Nebraska, that there's people coming in from all, all over. over. And the other thing was, the food was good, was legit. The food yeah, was so good. I know, I know. And then we had uh, Rocky Mountain oysters there. Yep, yep, yep. But they name them with like, everything's got the airplane. It was lug nuts. It was lug nuts. <laughs> so I think it'll be great to bring people along with us as we go and eat this you know, food and, and get in the air and see them in a different way and talk to them about what they're passionate about. Because there's so many cool people that we get to interact oh, with. Oh, it's so cool. And we never get the chance and take the time to actually, A, enjoy the air and B, get to know them better. And hear so, their story, right? Yeah, it's all and it so is. you think of we get to combine sharing our, our passion for aviation, yeah, our passion for learning for about people, <laughs> yeah. and and checking out our country in the yeah. form of small town airport. It's kind of like Route 66, but we're doing it from the air, air which right? Is cool. and so it's it's it is to me. It's like time travel because it feels like a we're getting somewhere really fast. Yeah. But B, we're going once back we in time. get there, we're, we go way back in time. It yeah. doesn't get any better than that. There's a lot of cool areas to see in in in, in you know the Midwest and. Um, we're here to showcase it and, and, and introduce people, hear their story, introduce them to aviation and, and, and get them in butch. Get them in butch and give them a whole new perspective. Old green plane. Right? Old that's green plane. Right. No, Jack, I'm excited, man. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Right, now do we run around and frolic and show? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad we didn't have streamers. <laughs>